Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. Well, hi, everybody. We are in downtown Los Angeles on Broadway, which has been blocked off for 10 or 11 blocks. There are tens of thousands of people here. It is the nation's largest Cinco de Mayo celebration. As you know, Southern California has a large Hispanic population, and there are all kinds of wonderful things going on here, including some great food. We are here through the good graces of Goya products. One of the women working there who is a genuine expert on authentic Mexican cooking is Ana Elena Martinez. I asked her what it is like to see an increasing number of people north of the border really fall in love with Mexican cooking. Well, I like that a lot because our food is really, really great and it's very good. And here you have also very good food, but ours, I think, is the best one. <laughs> and Mexico, we are like very typical. We have a lot of our roots are very strong, so we like to give, be open to all the people and to enjoy our food and our place and everything. Well, the other thing, too, food is very much a family kind of thing, and, and the Mexican family is very important. You still have very big families in Mexico, so you have to have nice, hearty meals. What are the basics of that kind of cooking? There's a lot of corn, I know, being used. Yes, we have a lot of corns that we, we make tortillas, we make tamales, also, well, Goya have also tortillas and corn to make tamales and because we don't we have time to go and take comida that we call comida is our like your lunch in our house because the distance is not very far so we can go to work and then come back and then go again to work so we are like a more closely family so we have to prepare more food and very good food. Well, it says that you have 75 different kinds of products that Goya makes. Can we go through some of these and can you explain the difference between tortillas and tacos and, and all of that for people? Because I'm kind of confused about the different kind of corn shells. Mm -hmm. Well, in Mexico we don't have corn, sh corn shells. We have tortillas. And here Goya they have flour tortillas and corn tortillas. The corn tortillas we use for tacos with carne, meat, pork, mm, and the flour tortillas we all almost make with cheese. Now, are they always soft? Yes, always soft. Yes, we have tostadas. It's our hard tortillas. Ah. Yes, just tostadas. Well, you must be feeding a lot of people. I see it. I'm, we're here late in the celebration, but it looks as though you've really used your grill today. Yes, we're preparing food for all the people in three hours, different hours, and we prepare fajitas and refried beans. So we have the grill for the meat and for the vegetables for the fajitas. Now, I know everything is a matter of taste, but I'm only now beginning to really get into spicy food. I had a, a friend who was in Mexico City for two or three years. He would eat the spiciest food and also put hot sauce on it. But yet, I guess if you grow up in that tradition, it's pretty natural. I'm just not used to it. I like a little spice. Well, I don't like too much hot also. I like to try just a little bite, but not very, very hot. In Mexico, all the people think that Mexico is always hot and very spicy, but all, not all the people like that. Well, I think, too, a lot of restaurants here in the States, which want to be Tex-Mex restaurants, make the mistake of thinking that all you have to do is just make it blistering hot and it's authentic. But there's a lot of spice nuance goes with this. Yes, we have a lot of spicy, like, well, is the tomatillos and a lot of things that come in, and we prepare that food, but... Really, we don't like too much hot and very, 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 very spicy. Well, now, cheese is a very important kind of thing. Do, do, do you use a different types of cheese than we see here, or is it pretty standard in North America? Well, here you have a lot of variety. In Mexico, we don't have too much. We have the manchego, that is like a gouda, gouda here, to melt, to make the quesadillas, and also the fresh cheese. But we don't have the feta and a lot of stuff that you have. That's more in a way of a European influence. Yes, a lot. Mm -hmm. This week on American Montage, we are smack dab in the middle of the nation's largest Cinco de Mayo celebration. We're near 8th and Broadway in downtown Los Angeles. We're spending some time with some wonderful people who really know how to cook. 
Tex-Mex cooking is becoming increasingly more popular in this country, and Goya Foods really knows how to do it right. And uh, we're spending time with Anna Elena Martinez, who has come all the way from Mexico to be with us today. Uh, cooking, cooking, cooking since all of this started this morning. Well, here we prepare, I think, for 200 people, and we are almost done. We are waiting for our last show, and I'm sure the food is going to fly. More and more groceries around the country, even in small towns now, are beginning to uh, to carry these products. I would think for someone who's really never done too much Tex-Mex cooking, not only is a lot of this very easy to fix, but it would be fun to experiment with and learn to do it. Yes, well, and these products are almost very, very authentic. Not like Tex-Mex. It's really Mexican food. Ah, genuine. Genuine. <laughs> Who is this gentleman here? I'm Alex Cabrera. I'm the general sales manager for California. Oh, Alex, come over here a little, little closer. Let's We're in kind of, a, kind of a, kind of a crowded situation here. Uh, a lot of people listening to this are, are all over the U.S. M many of them really have never yet been exposed to, to too much authentic Mexican cooking. I'm old enough to remember a time when I had pizza for the first time. My dad never had it because he thought it was kind of un-American. <laughs> but we are such a wonderfully mixed, complicated society now. What kind of comments are you getting from people who are trying some of these things for the first time? Maybe it's new to them. Well, it's, it's new maybe under the brand in some of the instances, but definitely not in terms of uh, quality and in terms of the, the flavor profile that they're looking for. Uh, Goya has been around for a very, very long time, and they always try to have both the best quality, uh, of in pro you know, to have the best quality in the products that they offer, and in addition to really seek what kind of products the authentic purchaser of the product line is looking for. And I think we have been pretty successful. Well, there are an awful lot of companies out there who are cashing in on it. I mean, I know you're the largest Hispanic foods company, I believe, Hispanic-owned in, in the U.S. Yes, this, sir. But, but you see almost every food company's gotten in on the bandwagon. And I know just in the tasting I've done, you can really tell when a company's been in the business for a long time or is just trying to do an imitation. Yes, you certainly can. I mean, it goes something as staple as the pasta that is very, very commonly used on a day, everyday basis. There's so many ways of, of making it, or actually just cutting corners. Uh, example, some of them is nothing more than enriched uh, semolina product. This is 100% Duran semolina. And, and those are the little things, you know, looking at the profile, looking at the chipotle, that it would have the same, you know, the right amount of uh, smokiness. So I agree with you. I need some definitions here. Chipotle, is that a type of chili? No, what it really is, uh, easiest way to describe it would be a barbecue sauce of sorts. It's oh, a smoky okay. flavor. Um, there was a restaurant I used to go to in the Washington, D.C. area before I moved out here uh -huh. that always had that as one of the, the things, and I never quite figured out what it was. Well, I'd be more than happy to give you a sample, and then you really will well, know what I mean. I'm going to try this first. Uh -huh. They brought over a cold can of, there we go, mango nectar. Mm -hmm. Um, how many different kinds of, I call them soft drinks, but uh, drinks like this does your company do? We, we do, we offer 11 different flavors, starting from pear, peach, and apricot, to mango, and guayaba, and guanabana, and uh, strawberry, and strawberry banana, and different combinations. And uh, for your listening audience, I think you're enjoying it. I think you just did the whole can. I may never go back to soft drinks again. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a lot better for you. It, it has somewhere, depending on the flavor, 20 some odd percent real fruit juice. I don't know whether I've ever had mango or not before. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful uh, uh, fruit. It's very known in the Caribbean and uh, all throughout Mexico, Central, and South America. I probably ruined the idea, but the first thought to me is, boy, that would be good over ice cream. <laughs> I think all, all of this sweet stuff would always be good over ice cream. You've got a big bowl of what looks like kidney beans, but you're mashing them with a potato masher. Right. We are going to make the fried beans, so we have to mash all the beans that are already cooked in the cans. So we just empty the cans and then mash with their juices, and then we are going to cook. First, we are going to fry onion in, in olive oil or vegetable oil, and then we put the beans until, it beca until the liquid becomes... Reduce. I wonder who, who thought of refried beans. I just love them. I don't know, but I love to. <laughs> the mayor would love this. It's a Chamber of Commerce Day weather-wise. Yeah, oh, yes. We asked for this. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI Radio Network back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.